Nebraska, the number one overall season, the overall seed. For the sixth time, they have only lost one match on the season. That was to Wisconsin, who will play in our other semifinal. Meanwhile, for the Pitt Panthers, drama for them in the regional final, facing their rival, surviving the reverse sweep to get back to the semis. But what a rewarding way to be able to get to a national semifinal. Down two sets to none on your home court, and you find a way to gut it out. You win three straight sets in a reverse sweep over your arch nemesis in Louisville. I think Rachel Fairbanks for Pitt said it best. She said, we are on a business trip. We are here to win a national championship. And this Pitt team is on a mission. They have been so close. Is tonight the night they break through? No surprise though, ladies. There's a lot of red in the stands in Emily Arena here in Tampa. Nebraska travels well sold out how many months ago and I think that was in part because of Nebraska fans a long time ago backside and there goes Olivia Babcock her first swing in the semifinals and for Pitt a freshman passed that ball freshman terminated 31 of 33 matches led by freshman for Pitt Olivia Babcock the number 43 overall player Newer to the sport of volleyball, but Dan Fisher convinced her that volleyball was her calling, not soccer, and that'll be a service error for Pitt Point for Nebraska. Could you imagine if she was in a goalie somewhere? I'm glad she's not. Well, she also <laughs> said she didn't like the running part of yeah. soccer. <laughs> mm. Here's Harper Murray for Nebraska. The Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Vasquez Gomez. Amy Klicka steps up to bump set that to Tori Stafford, another outstanding freshman for Pitt. Merritt Beeson, the Florida transfer. Fairbanks back to Stafford, and Lexi Rodriguez is there. Harper Murray out of the back row. Babcock. Bergen Riley calling on Merritt Beeson again, the leader, the captain of Nebraska. We're going to see a lot of extended rallies like that, working from pin to pin. Finally, Merritt Beeson finds a seam in that pit block. With such good defenses, it stresses you mentally. Can you remain focused during a long rally and keep that ball in play? Fairbanks throws it up for Babcock. Rodriguez will set up. Allie Batenhorst, and she is blocked by Olivia Babcock. Get that hand up there. With such big blocks on both sides, the two setters that you're watching today, they have to be really precise with their location. If they leave the ball inside Holly, you're leaving them in a closet against these big blocks. Definitely, and Olivia Babcock, number five on the right side for Pitt, is a monster block. Cat flood serving. She goes after Harper Murray, and it's an ace for Flood. Dan Fisher in his 11th season. They are the only team in the last three semifinals. They have six players that are playing in their third national semifinal. You have to imagine that experience, being able to draw on being on this stage so many times, has to be helpful here tonight. They go back at Murray. She handles it better. Merritt Beeson off hands. Cat Flood steps in to set up Babcock. And she'll take a piece of the block with her. Olivia Babcock does not look faced. Well, Pitt is, likes to go high, and it doesn't need to be fast for Olivia Babcock because she is so high. Her point of contact working the outside hand of the block down the line. Going after Harper Murray and serve receive. Fairbanks to Tori Stafford and she stopped. Becca yeah. Alec and Merritt Beeson. Nebraska returning the favor. Pitt has been going after Harper Murray and serve receive. They really want to test her out. So now Lexi Rodriguez, the two time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, back to serve for Nebraska. Fairbanks on the move up to Babcock. And 
Andy Jackson, one of the true freshmen that have stepped up for Nebraska. Really nice job by Nebraska, forcing Pittsburgh out of system. This set is low and tight, and it leaves Olivia Babcock with not very many options. Great job blocking. Really nice job by Andy Jackson, working to get out to close that block. Don't you think in these first few points, we're going to see these teams feel each other out because of the big block Absolutely. on both sides? Definitely. The court is shrunk. When you're playing a great defensive team, you it's hard to find open floor. Terry Stafford tipping just wide. Point Nebraska. Well, John Cook was named the AVCA Coach of the Year for the third time in his career. So well deserved. Guys, he has no seniors on this roster. He has six new players. Five of them are freshmen. And they have only lost one match all season. And I think he's having a lot of fun this year coaching. He's got a young group, but he's got two amazing assistant coaches. You see Olivia Babcock elevate on the right side and crush that ball versus Nebraska defense. I agree with you. He might not look it, but we swear he's having a ton of fun. And yeah. that's because of the youth <laughs> on this Nebraska team. He said he has been a lot more patient. You have to be, right, with young players who are, who are learning this for the first time. Babcock trying to fire off a big serve, and it's a service error. She already has three kills, hitting 400. A true freshman, Olivia she's, Babcock, out of Los Angeles. She's also the best server so far in the NCAA tournament with 50 aces. Actually, not 50 aces on the season, but she does lead the NCAA tournament. Yeah, 10 aces in the tournament. Fairbanks gets it out of the net. Stafford tips it over. Batenhorst. Jackson with the slam. Here comes Babcock out of the back row. And Nebraska could challenge this. I think the ball hit the antenna. Yeah, when Rachel Fairbanks went up to the net and dug that ball out, it almost looked like the ball grazed the antenna. And Jalen Reyes went over and picked the green challenge card up and handed it to John Cook. He and said, begged Here. him. <laughs> begged him to make that challenge. He was certain that ball hit the antenna. And so Nebraska has used that challenge. You get two challenges per match. Unless we go to a fifth set, each team will get an additional challenge. If you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. I don't think it hit the antenna there. From that angle, it did not appear that it did. No, and I think what messes with your eyes, if you're Jalen Reyes across the court, is that antenna is already wobbling back and forth. You're right. I also don't see Pitt being in the net there. That's all, another thing they could look at on this challenge. Yeah, I think the net was already moving because the ball mm. grabbed it on the way down. They could look for it hitting the antenna and also a player in the net. Also, just really good pursuit by Pittsburgh, by the way. Yes. To get that point. I mean, that's the defense we're talking about, right? There's going to be scrappy mm -hmm. plays on both sides. A lot of bumps and bruises, a lot of ice packs needed after this one. So Daphne Nelson is our R2. She is the one taking a look and making the decision on this. And again, Nebraska thought it hit the antenna. You can see there it does not. If the ball did hit the antenna, it would be out. And I think we have a decision. So the call is confirmed. Nebraska will go down to one challenge. Unless we go to a fifth set, they'll get an additional challenge. Here's Tori Stafford. She was the number 12 overall recruit in this class, a true freshman, all ACC first team selection, and the third team All American. Andy Jackson on the slide, dug up by Pitt. Fairbanks and Valeria Vasquez Gomez got tripped up on the Pitt side. Seemed to be okay. Ali Batenhorst saved by Stafford. Andy Jackson by herself. Stuffed it. 
The eye work by Andy Jackson, the freshman, number 15 in white. Look at her see that ball go the other direction, get out and over the net to block that ball for Nebraska. What did Dan Fisher tell us? We asked him about Nebraska. He said, Andy Jackson is a bad matchup for us. She's a problem. She's a problem for everybody because she is so dynamic and so fast. Service error, point pit. Seven all, we're going to 25. Dylan Griffin checking in to serve for the Pitt Panthers. Lexi Rodriguez with the layout, Merritt Beeson in front of a triple block. Bergen Riley calling on Harper Murray, her fellow freshman. That cut. Riley back to Harper Murray. Through the block of Rachel Fairbanks. Really nice job by Harper Murray tracking that set, feeling that there was a gap between Rachel Fairbanks and the net, and she's able just to push this ball through. Nice, strong tip. So Kennedy Orr, who has shifted into that serving specialist role for Nebraska, will sub in. Also a setter for the Cornhuskers. Fairbanks going to the middle with Emma Monks. Becca Alec making her case to her coaches that she didn't touch it, but remember, they've already lost a challenge early on in set one. Yeah, it's hard to pull the second challenge card, right? You're down to one in challenge. The first set. I know, unless we go he, to a fifth. He was definitely reluctant to get up. But He's going to do done. it again. Look at John Cook gambling. I love it. If Nebraska is incorrect in this challenge, they will have no challenges until the fifth set. Becca Alec was demonstrative when she came down from that block, pleading to John Cook that she did not touch that ball. So the original call was that it was touched. Well, she was very late on the block to begin yes. with, so she was on her way up. Emma Monks, number nine in the middle, four pit, attacking through that gap. Here's another look at it. Watch number five in white, her hands. I don't see a touch. I don't either. That ring finger and that pinky of the right hand of Becca Alex. She's late, unfortunately. So she's on her way up. Does it possibly hit? No, that shows you that Bergen Riley definitely has no touch on the play. That's a good angle right there. I do not see a touch. Yeah, great look. You don't see any of number five. That's Becca Alex fingers moving. And she's hitting away from number two. That's Bergen Riley. So if they're seeing what we're seeing, this call should be overturned. No touch and it was out. So Nebraska keeps its challenge. They have one remaining unless we go to a fifth set. It's a lot of trust there with John Cook and Becca Alec. This is a rotation for Pitt where the center, Rachel Fairbanks, is in the front row. Two hitters stack, Emma Munts. Fairbanks has to get it up with one hand to Valeria Vasquez Gomez, and she'll terminate. And just that gets nice, them out. A nice job, Courtney, by Rachel Fairbanks on the run here. One hand just gets her out of trouble, and then Vasquez Gomez is in a one-on-one -on -one situation because of the save. Nice job by Fairbanks there. Really athletic move to get under and lift that so her hitter can attack that. The role has changed for Rachel Fairbanks. This is the first time this season in her career that she is setting in the front row as Pitt is running a 5-1 and not a 6-2 system. 
she grew up playing in a 6-2 offense. That's where she would hit across the front row set from the back row, except for the summers when she trained with USA. She was able to run a 5-1 and get some experience there. But with the personnel on pit, with a right sider like Olivia Babcock, you need Rachel Fairbanks in a 5-1. We did ask her, do you miss attacking? She goes, man, I do love it. But it is really exciting to set up my great hitters and they get a kill. It's a, it's a different kind of satisfaction. Having two setters sitting next to me, I'm sure you know what that's like. Murray drops it in the corner. Harper Murray loves the big stage. You see the dig here and then the push out to the pin. Harper Murray, deep corner, love that swing. Harper Murray has carried a very big load for Nebraska all season, playing all six rotations. True freshman, Vasquez Gomez. Riley back to Murray. Clicka steps in to set up Babcock. Vasquez Gomez had to reach behind her to get it and couldn't get it all the way over the net. Maybe recycle that, tip into the block, play it back. She had nowhere to go. No, absolutely. Two blocks now for Pitt, three for Nebraska in this match. And Merritt Beeson tooling the block and hit the block and then the antenna, so the point goes to Nebraska. Merritt Beeson's showing her versatility, attacking on the left side. Olivia Babcock's really high over the net. She needs to be disciplined with pressing over the net, keeping her hands on the opponent's side. Here makes to Tori Stafford. Point Nebraska. Tori Stafford telling Dan Fisher, yes, that ball touched me on the way out. Got her shoulder. Right off her shoulder. Yep. Good eyes. Stafford off hands. And Pitt's having to do this. Fairbanks is on the move a lot right now. But she is so good at setting her team in system. Even though she's on the run, look at the tempo and the pace of this ball. Just Tori Stafford. Really nice job by Rachel Fairbanks on the run keeping her team in system. And that's what makes her special. She has a wide range where she can keep Pitt in system running that tempo. In system meaning they have all three attacking options they can go to. <laughs> Allie Bainthorst dug up by Flood. Stafford crushing it down the line. We talk about Harper Murray carrying a big load for Nebraska, but Tori Stafford does the same thing for Pitt. She passes six rotations. Look at her crossbody down the line for Pitt. That's a big kill. And the passion, too. It's contagious. Her teammates love feeding off of her joy and her energy. And her poise. Mm -hmm. and Dan Fisher told us she competes from a place of joy, and that's definitely something that's contagious. Right to the donut, the middle of the floor. Pat Flood a little bit tentative, number three in yellow. She was looking at that instead of laying down to dig that for Pitt. You cannot be tentative. Fairbanks backside to Babcock, and Allie Bainhorst wins the battle. Nebraska's block prevailing, and the Cornhuskers the first to 15 points. 
Our first semifinal of the night, Pitt and Nebraska. Cornhuskers on top by three. Not an easy road for either of these teams. Pitt having to go through its rival Nebraska. One of its biggest tests of the season was facing Arkansas in that regional semi, that regional final where they really had to battle, but both are back in the semifinals pit for a third straight year. We talked about defense at the top of the show and both teams hold their opponents to low numbers. And both teams right now hitting one. Pitt is hitting negative, and Nebraska is hitting .087. What are you seeing out of Pitt right now that's giving them problems? Well, I think they've done a nice job at the net getting block touches, and that's a really nice swing from Stafford to get the kill. They're playing sloppy. They've got eight errors, eight kills, so they're literally hitting zero for the match. Similar to the way they started against Louisville a weekend ago, they were a little bit sloppy, took them a little bit to get going. If they play clean, high-level volleyball, we could be seeing a different score here. And against Louisville, they were down two sets to none and got the reverse sweep. They won three sets in a row to punch their ticket to Tampa. Babcock back row. Yes. Olivia Babcock said when she came to pit, she was not a very good defensive player, and she's really worked on it. Look at her control that ball, and then big transition kill deep in the court for Pitt. Looked like Harper Murray couldn't decide if that was in or out. And a service error by Babcock, her second tonight. She'll tell you, my greatest strength is my serve. My greatest weakness is my serve. If Just it's on, it is on. I'll tell you, they're watching both of these teams, ladies. They never panic. Mm -mm. We've seen them both tested. They don't hit the panic button. That is six blocks for Nebraska, and we are in the first set. Allie Badenhorst is long at six foot five. She comes in from left front and helps Andy Jackson to block that ball. Nebraska's done such a nice job of staying home, always tracking Babcock out of the back row. So what is the adjustment the hitters for Pitt have to make? Courtney, why do you always got to ask the hard question? Hey, it's the question everybody wants to know if you're a Pitt fan. For starters, for starters, they got to start passing the ball a little bit better so Rachel Fairbanks has all of her options at her disposal. They become one-dimensional because they're out of system, so you know the ball is going to the back row. Makes it easier on the block. Beeson handles that beautifully. Allie Badenhorst is going to get hands. Beautiful pass by Mary Beeson. And then, obviously, Badenhorst going flat and high off the hands. Bergen Riley, the freshman setter for Nebraska, locates that ball perfectly for her outside hitter. Allie Badenhorst has had to step up when Lindsey Krause went down with injury back in October. She has taken over. Beatenhorst says that other outside hitter spots. No touch. That one sails long on Olivia Babcock. One of the things Dan Fisher talked about, he said, look, we're both great defensive teams, but we're more aggressive offensively. Nebraska up 19-15 in this first set over Pitt. And it started with a world record. Volleyball day in Nebraska, 92,003 fans packed into the football stadium to watch Nebraska play a volleyball match. They won the Big Ten title for the first time since 2017. Number one overall seed for the sixth time in program history. They've won two national titles as the number one overall seed and six all Big Ten selections. That was the most in program history. Nebraska has only lost one match all season, and that was to Wisconsin. And John Cook told us, the players told us, that took the pressure off heading into the tournament. They have a 27 match winning streak. So yeah, you want to lose if you're going to lose during the season, not during the NCAA tournament. Long serve out of the timeout by Laney Choboy and a point for Pitt. 
So Pitt called that last time out. They are hitting zero right now with 10 attacking errors here in set one. What's wild, Nebraska only has six kills in this first set. I mean, they've done this defensively and also because Pittsburgh right now is beating themselves. And six blocks for Nebraska, two for Pitt. Harper Murray, off speed in the middle of the court. Really nice job by Harper Murray. She's already showed you a couple of her tools in her toolkit, that she can go hard cross court, she can tip the ball through the block, and then she can just finesse you with a nice roll shot to the donut of the court. Harper Murray, the Gatorade National Player of the Year, was the number one overall recruit. to Emma Monks, and Fairbanks didn't have to move very much. No, perfect pass, and then Emma Monks is long, number nine in yellow, just a paintbrush kill to the middle of the court. So Fairbanks pit setter rotates to the back. The back row, she'll have three attacking options in the front row to set. Still serving at Harper Murray to make her pass. She's going to tool their block for a kill. Nebraska, the race to 25 points. John, John Cook talked about Harper Murray, the load that she carries for this team. Team serve her, and then she's got a swing high off the hand. She's got all the offensive tools going off the inside hand of Emma Monks, the pit middle blocker. And look at her numbers right now. In their last match against Arkansas, she hit 163. She's at 375 right now. They can't get it back over. I love what John Cook told us about Harper Murray. He said she is one of the best, if not the best player in the country after 20 points. He said, watch, when we get to 20, she is involved in almost every single point that gets us to a set win, and we've seen that thus far. Harper Murray, she told us Jalen Reyes recruited her early, and she absolutely loves the coaching staff, loves the, su the support that Nebraska Volleyball gets. Harper, such a great story. The Gatorade National Player of the Year. She won the U19 Pan Am Cup. And 27, it's an interesting number to wear, but her dad, Veda Murray, who passed away from lung cancer when Harper was six years old, he wore number 27 playing football at Michigan. And she texted John Cook in the recruiting process after she committed and said, I want to wear 27. And he goes, I think that's the perfect number for you. She is such a special player. She can do it all. And you know what I love? She's got a little sass to her. She's not afraid to go back at Jalen Reyes and John Cook respectfully, yeah, of yeah. course. You never did that, right? No, not at all. Not respectfully. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't miss the NCAA Division I Volleyball Championship for the first time ever, Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC. We are so excited for more information on all 90 NCAA championships. Visit NCAA.com. This is just our first of two semifinals tonight. Texas and Wisconsin will start about 35 minutes after this match concludes. Texas, of course, the defending national champions. Nebraska's defense and poise has served them well here in set one. Three points away from taking the opening set. Speaking of poise, you were just looking at it. Bergen Riley almost is a, a statue in terms of the way that she plays. You never know what she's thinking, how she's feeling. She is so even keeled and steady for this team. Well, she told us yesterday, she's like, look, I've played up my whole life, so I'm not intimidated by the stage. When she was in eighth grade, she was playing on varsity. When she was 13, she was setting for the 18 teams. She is used to playing in the big moment with older players with a lot of experience. It's a good sign for Pitt. That looks really good coming out of the hand of Valeria Vasquez Gomez, her second kill. Vasquez Gomez was part of Pitt's first round of 18 back in 2020, and she's been to the last two semifinals with them now in her third. Tori Stafford on the chase. Riley to Merritt Beeson. 
Merrick Beeson sneaking it through the seam on the block. Olivia Babcock is high, and that allows that ball to sneak through. You have to press that inside hand, either Emma Monks or Olivia Babcock, to close that seam for the pit block. Raising the tape, and Emmy Klicka gets it up. Stafford is long, and it's set point Nebraska. Pitt's going to make a substitution. They'll sub out Valeria Vasquez Gomez and bring in Logan Mosley, a defensive specialist, to pass in the back row. Stafford puts it right on the head of Fairbanks and drops it in the corner. Second set point, Nebraska. We talked about the poise of Tori Stafford. She passes this, passes this ball perfectly, and then look at that smart swing deep to the corner to avoid the Nebraska defense. Rodriguez will have to set Batenhorst. Cuts it too sharp. Third set point, Nebraska. It has consistently gone after Harper Murray, number 27 in white for Nebraska. Yeah, I think it's a, a fair strategy, right? You want to test her, you want to wear her down, especially if this goes into extra sets. But Holly, you know better than most, sometimes passing can actually put you in a rhythm when you're attacking. There are outside hitters, right side hitters, who like to pass the ball and then immediately go into their approach. And Harper Murray's done a nice job of that tonight. Well, I think Pitt wants to avoid Lexi Rodriguez, the three-time All-American in the backcourt, too. So that's another reason to serve away from her. Nebraska calls this time out here. They'll have their third set point. Want to let you know, bowl season begins Saturday. Seven games on ESPN, ABC, and ESPN+. Plus. Here's the ABC triple header starting at noon. Eastern Howard and Florida A&M in the Cricket Celebration Bowl. Then Miami of Ohio takes on App State in the Avocados from Mexico Pure Bowl. We finish up with UCLA and Boise State in the LA Bowl at SoFi Stadium. That's coming up on Saturday. Our championship match Sunday at 3 Eastern for the first time. It will be on ABC. One of these teams will be there facing either Texas or Wisconsin. It will be our second semifinal later tonight. Texas coming off the bus. What timing. Ella Swindle, the, two, the freshman setter for this Texas team who won a national championship last season. They're a two seed in this year's tournament and upset Stanford on the Cardinals home floor to get here. They're big underdogs. Yes. Defending national champions and big underdogs for set number two coming up later this evening. Third set point Cornhuskers. Harper Murray struggles with the pass. Batenhorst. What a save. Nebraska gets a free ball backside to Merritt Beeson. In flies Stafford. Three blockers in front of her. Nebraska's block has formed a wall in Tampa. Eight blocks in the first set. Unbelievable start defensively, eight blocks, and it was unbelievable defense by Nebraska to win the first set. Well, Pitt hitting zero in the first set. Oh. I mean, they're averaging 300 in the NCAA tournament. That's a big drop, but we've also seen Pitt have slow starts. Mm -hmm. I mean, two reverse sweeps to come back against great opponents. Dan Fisher told us only one time this season against BYU did he feel like his team did not respond or flip the switch when needed. This is a team that is used to responding, so let's see how they fare here in set two. And you know Nebraska is going to be ready for that. They're a team that also 
has been challenged, and when challenges come up, they haven't been rattled. The great thing about volleyball, you get to the next set, it's a clean slate, you start over. And they can be so different. Yes. It's so frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> it is so frustrating. It's One time you have momentum. the momentum. Oh, yeah. it's, it, momentum swings back and forth. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak, and Katie George with you. The start of set two here after Nebraska. One set one, 25-20 in our first semifinal of the night. Harper Murray with the tip. Fairbanks to Valeria Vasquez Gomez. Out of the back row, Merrick Beeson. Olivia Babcock, and that is block number nine. The discipline of Nebraska's block, and I think they have a very good scouting report. They know exactly where that ball's going in transition. And it goes to Olivia Babcock often. You see Harper Murray and Becca Alec with the Nebraska block. Nebraska's coming off a season high, 17 blocks against Arkansas. They already have nine. And Vasquez Gomez finding the court. Nice job by Gomez. They're falling away from that set able to drop that into the middle of the court. She has three kills, hitting 333, also five digs. And she will step back to serve. Still going after Harper Murray. Becca Alec is long, point pit. And John Cook is going to pull the green challenge card for a third time tonight. Just want to clear, assistant coaches are not able to challenge calls, but Jalen Reyes makes the case to John Cook almost every time. John Cook's the CEO. Jalen Reyes is making <laughs> things happen. You see him, he's up during every play, talking to his team. But John Cook has the last choice on oh. that, and you see a big touch off number nine in yellow. See all the blue fingernails for Pitt. Yeah, no question. That's a fantastic look by our crew. Love those slow-mo cameras. Yeah, that index finger is wobbling back and forth. Really nice catch by the camera crew. And so for the second time tonight, Nebraska is correct in their challenge. They still have one challenge remaining unless we go to a fifth set. And John Cook's shaking his head. I think he's a little frustrated that he's had to challenge that many times. Three, <laughs> Three times. already this early in the match. <laughs> Tori Stafford. Take two. Riley backside to Beeson. Allie Batenhorst as they try the left side. Great pickup off the block here by Lexi Rodriguez. A good push from Bergen Riley, but look at this all the way out into the antenna. Allie Batenhorst has all the shots. She can work herself around that block. Great swing. Stafford into the Nebraska block. Right back into Merritt Beeson. Welcome to my block party. Party. I love watching Becca Alec patrol the net side to side. Merritt Beeson gets all of that, but Becca Alec gets there to close. And you're right, Nebraska having a field day at the net. That is a song, right? Yes, it is. Okay. I yeah, you're wanna, good. Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Don't sing anymore and I will have to pay a rights fee, but. <laughs> Ladies, double figure blocks for Nebraska for the 13th time this season. They have 10. We are in the second set. We talked about it. Kelly Sheffield said, hey, you can win in a lot of different ways. We didn't think it was going to be all about blocks because Nebraska has fantastic backcourt defense, but that's been the story so far. We have yet to see Pitt make the adjustment. But having watched them this season, you know it's coming at some point. Pitt and 
answering with a block of its own by Olivia Babcock. Well, Pitt was able to get Nebraska out of system in their huge block, just camping out on that right side, and it pays off. These blocks that we're seeing, it really tests you as an attacker to be creative, right? And to really focus your eyes on what you're seeing in front of you so that you can use the block to your advantage. It's got to be hard to not be frustrated, though, right? Absolutely. Rodriguez diving. This will be a free ball back to Pitt. A great opportunity for the Panthers to terminate. And Shiamaka Wokolo will. First time we have called her name the veteran the captain of this pit team and i love watching chia wokolo play great job in a free ball situation running a quick one set out of the middle wokolo able to beat that block those strong cross-court shot she was working in a law office when dan fisher took her to coffee and said please come back you'll have to earn your spot on the court but you 100 percent will be our captain and she has done both <laughs> merit beast into the back line one captain to another Merit Beeson has worked on her approach from that right side and watch her hit with range. She loves that sharp angle, but this time going high, deep down that line for the kill. Five kills for Beeson to lean the Cornhuskers. Fairbanks going quickly to work low. Murray out of the back row. One-handed save by Harper Murray. And it was touched. The effort pays off for Murray in the back row. Look at the range that you see from Harper Murray as she plays middle back for Nebraska. This ball is cut down the line. She's able to run it down with one hand. Lexi Rodriguez sets up bait and horse for the kill. Nebraska hitting 333 in this set. Stafford tooling the block this time. There you go. There's that creativity you yeah. need to see. You have to manage your swings and change it up. That time using the outside hand of Merritt Beeson. Stafford out of the negative, but hitting zero right now. Six kills, six errors. And a third service error tonight from Olivia Babcock. I saw Olivia Babcock yesterday working on that, and she kept reminding herself to reach high and, and hit that ball deep. We've seen her hit a couple into the net already. It was passed really tight. Rachel Fairbanks just trying to save that set in her middle blocker, but just a misconnect there. Oh, drop it in, Mary Beeson. Welcome to the semifinals. Talk about threading a needle down the line, line to line. Mary Beeson is able to get this past Tori Stafford's out shoulder what a serve from Merritt Beeson Nebraska with a four-point lead here in set two he said what do you envision when you hit the transfer portal and you came to Nebraska and she said Abs this this is what I envision coming to the semifinals and she just dropped in an ace in some of her skills won her voice and building relationships and that's why she's a leader on this young Nebraska team there are no seniors on Nebraska's team so it's Merritt Beeson and Lexi Rodriguez who are the captains Jackson just soars. When I hear you say no seniors on this Nebraska team, that's scary to think every single player is going to be returning next season for this team. And better. Exactly. A 6-1 to one run now for seniorless Nebraska. Just long. You put the numbers with the underclassmen. Look at the percentage the underclassmen make up. 55% of their kills, 52% of their digs, 44% of their blocks by underclassmen this season.
drops it. Underclassmen give her another kill. And this is the matchup that head coach of Pitt, Dan Fisher, was worried about. Andy Jackson, her length. Look at her high point of contact going high off the hands of Pitt. She can hit with so much range for Nebraska. It's her second kill. You know, we talk about the youth of Nebraska, a key for them. All five freshmen arrived in January. They all graduated early, and John Cook said that has been the difference maker. Pitt has brought in Alexis Akeo to set, number one in the back row. I think it's a great point, Courtney. The fact that they all arrived early, they were able to build chemistry, they were able to learn about each other, build that rapport that certainly we are seeing here tonight. But actually, it makes it even more impressive that you've got two freshmen on Pittsburgh that are just as impactful. They arrived at the end of June and are playing at this level the way that they are in less time. Good point. Upper Murray off hands. And Vasquez Gomez hits into the net. Pitt has two setters on the floor. They are now in a 6-2. Rachel Fairbanks is going to be a hitter, it looks like. A KO number one for Pitt will be the other setter on the floor. Not something they're unfamiliar with. Pitt ran a 6-2 most of last season with these two settings. So there's Lexus Akeo. And Becca Alec was ready. Becca Alec just owns the net for Nebraska. That is her part of the court. Stay out of her way. Watch her eye work. She is not fooled all over that ball. Good handwork to throw it back down. So going back to the 6-2, that means the setter is always in the back row. There's always three attacking options in the front row. How can this help Pitt in this situation? Just gives you a couple more options to be able to swing, especially when you're out of system. Great dig there by Pittsburgh. Off of the block, into the antenna, point Pitt. Worth mentioning, though, Rachel Fairbanks was forced into a 5-1 for Pittsburgh because she was dealing in the midseason with an ab injury, and now she's going to be asked to attack when she moves up to the front row. Will be interesting to watch her production as an attacker now, not just as what she does as a setter. So she is now rotated to the back row to set for Pitt and serve. Merrick Beeson triple blocked. Vasquez Gomez! Pitt puts up a triple block. They're ready for this ball in this rotation, going to Merritt Beeson, and they are all over that. Valeria Vasquez Gomez, number two, closing that block for Pitt. I appreciate the switch by Dan Fisher, trying to provide a spark, change things up, make it a little bit more difficult for Nebraska's block. Now you've got three hitters at all times that you have to be able to focus on. I appreciate trying to change something here. Chess match. And they've also had trouble scoring offensively, so why not put another arm? Twice into the block. They go fast to Harper Murray. Everybody on the Nebraska side holds up their hand for a touch. For a fourth time tonight, John Cook will pull the green challenge card. Incredible. This ball gets pushed out pretty fast. Looks finger. like a fingertip. Olivia Babcock, she's high over the net. That gives Harper Murray some hands to attack. You can see right, right there. Right off the pinky. I just love how disgusted John <laughs> Cook is. I've seen <laughs> every time too. he has to get up. No, I mean, this is a lot of challenges early in this match. Four it times, is. and he's been correct three times, including this one. And the first one he wasn't correct on, he can blame Jalen Reyes. Correct. <laughs> Largest lead for Nebraska. And a footfall on Bergen Riley on her serve. 
A very rare air by Bergen Riley. She's really upped her service game. Left foot, just toes touch that line. Free point for Pittsburgh. Can you go on a run with fast guys? Go messes serve here. Murray will swing from the right side. Fairbanks to Monk. Slaney Choboy flying. And Merrick Beeson is blocked by Monks and Babcock. Pitt finding ways to score, and it's all about their defense. Emma Monks and Olivia Babcock. Huge block for Pitt on the right side. Nebraska's going to take a timeout. So Nebraska takes a timeout. Is Pitt starting to see signs mm -hmm. of life? A little spark after flipping to this 6-2. This is a Pitt Panthers team that's a number one seed in this year's tournament and back in the semifinals for the third straight year. The co-ACC champions, they win back-to-back -back ACC conference titles, beat their rival in a reverse sweep for the second time this season on the biggest stage in that regional final to get to Tampa. They're the only team that has been in the semifinals each of the last three seasons. A program record seven all-conference selections. Two of those there, Olivia Babcock, not just the ACC Freshman of the Year, but the National Freshman of the Year. And we talked about the freshman coming in early to Nebraska. The Pitt freshman came in June, but Olivia Babcock had some back issues, so she wasn't even able to play until the preseason started. And she was a little bit down on herself, like maybe I should redshirt, but as soon as she was able to be cleared and healthy to train with this team, she knew she was ready to go, and boy, has she had an amazing season. Now she is one of several fabulous freshmen that we have in this match on both sides of the net. Olivia Babcock, Tori Stafford for Pitt, and then Bergen Riley, who has been the starter from day one at center for Nebraska. Harper Murray, Andy Jackson, Lady Choboy. So much t young talent on this floor. I can't wait to see their games grow. I think it's terrifying for their opponents because they're going to be here for a oh, very no, long no. time. Agreed. drops on Laney Choboy. Becca Alex steps into set a little bit too tight, which allows Babcock to throw down. That starts at the service line for Pitt. And Vasquez Gomez offensively has been big for Pitt in this set too. Three kills, just one error hitting 250. All coming in set number two here. Show boy, better pass. Harper Murray off the block and give Harper Murray her sixth kill to lead Nebraska. And you see the versatility of Harper Murray that time swinging on the right. We saw her also block on the right in a couple different rotations. Harper Murray, the second Big Ten freshman of the year at Nebraska. The first was Maddie Kubik. by Murray. Beeson looking down the line, too wide, point pit. Mary Beeson going for that line swing again, just turning it a little bit too much. Told their center that she liked that set. right on top of Bergen Riley's head here. She's got all three options at her disposal. She pushes a nice in tempo set, gets Baton Horse one on one. That one just died going across the net. 
Okay, Olivia Babcock off the head of the Nebraska block. The athleticism and length of Olivia Babcock gives her the ability to go high off those hands. Watch her just hang. She's a little bit on the way down. Looks like it got some head. <laughs> I'd say we don't, we've all been there, but Holly, I don't think you and I have. No, I there. definitely have never, I've never had a ball no. over the net. No, <laughs> come close to my head. No, neither have I. Oh, laser beam! That's the serve. That's the serve we're used to seeing from Olivia Babcock. And you talk about swagger. Harper Murray's got it, but so does Olivia Babcock. And now, really getting after it, reaching high. And look at that angle on that serve. What an ace. Closest since it was 7-5 to five in this set. Pitt is on a 6-2 to two run. And a service error for Babcock. High risk, high reward serve. Six service errors for Pitt. Pitt's back to the 5-1. Rachel Fairbanks in the front row running the offense. Bergen Riley going over on two. Catching Pitt off guard. I love a good two-shoe. You don't expect it. She goes up like she's about to set up one of her hitters, Andy Jackson in particular, and just tosses this ball over right to the donut. And no matter what's happening in the match, Bergen Riley looks the same. She is a <laughs> silent assassin. Well, bowl season begins Saturday with this ESPN quadruple header starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. Georgia Southern battles Ohio and then Jacksonville State taking on Louisiana, followed by New Mexico State and Fresno State. We'll cap the day with Cal and Texas Tech in the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl that's coming up on Saturday. Well, Nebraska one set one 25 to 20. They had eight blocks in the first set. They are up to 11 for the match. But Pitt, you're starting to see them figure things out slowly but surely. They're still down four here in set two. And, and it's tough to have a slow start against a team like Nebraska. I mean, they've jumped all over. Some teams you can come back against. Not sure Nebraska wants to let this Pitt team back in. A appearance in the championship is on the line. Pitt has been to this round the last three years, but they have never broken through to the championship match. Nebraska, 10 appearances in the national title match. They have five national championships, the last coming in 2017. One of these teams will advance to Sunday to face either Texas or Wisconsin. That'll be our second and final semifinal of the night. Took a piece, she's up to five kills. <laughs> Olivia Babcock. She looks like she was just hitting that out of the front row. Yeah. Unbelievable lead by Rachel Fairbanks. Look where she starts her jump and where she finishes. Right behind that line and at the net. Unbelievable angle from Babcock. And I don't even think she's at the height of her no. reach. I think she's a little bit on the way down. The joust goes on the pit side. Nebraska able to get it out of the net. Three ball back to the Panthers. Fairbanks to Wokolo. Still going. Vasquez Gomez. Bainhorst broke through. Scrappy, scrappy play. Allie Bainhorst is working hard with her feet. This is a tough set to hit. It's off the net. It's coming over your shoulder, but she stays aggressive for Nebraska, and it pays off.
Cornhuskers four points away. Babcock out of the back row again. That puts her at eight kills to lead Pitt. She's got a full stat line, three digs and six blocks to go along with that. And hit the antenna. No, the up official waves it off. But Emma Monks puts it on the middle of the floor. The lines judge waved the flag in the air, signaling it hit the antenna. Valeria Vasquez Gomez, huge block on Andy Jackson. That's the matchup that Nebraska wanted, Pitt didn't, but it pays off for Pitt there. Upper Murray, and a misconnection, looking for the roll shot. Pitt going for a little run, trying to get momentum, and this is an important time. Laney Choboy upset with herself, knows she can put together a better pass out of serve receive for her team. And Nebraska will call timeout here. Well, this pit team, they know what it means to fight, to have your backs against the wall. They were down two, two sets to their rival and came back and won their regional final. You know, Louisville came out swinging, played extremely well in the first two sets at Pittsburgh last weekend. What I absolutely love about this story is you had three players after they were down two sets to none run into a public bathroom at the arena, hold hands and scream into the mirror, scaring the people in the stalls. Just needed to scream, <laughs> sure. yell, get all of their frustration out, recenter themselves. And that was Tori Stafford. That was Olivia Babcock and Valeria Vasquez Gomez who went into that bathroom. Whatever they did in there worked. It did in the third set. They came out and hit a blistering 600, I believe, at some point in that third set and it really turned things around for them. I don't know if they're yelling in that huddle over there, but if you come out and you put it on Nebraska from the service line, you could possibly even this thing up one apiece. That's a great way to go into the locker room. Pitt, Pitt is on a 3-0 run right now. You see the difference between the first set and the second set. The errors have come way down from 13 in set one to four here in the second set. They've gone on a 10 to six run since trailing by six here in set two. Murray has to readjust, and that's going to be an attacking error. There was a touch called, so it will be a point for Nebraska. Did look like Harper Murray got her feet quite to that ball, but was able to swing and get a piece of the pit block. It's a huge side out by Nebraska. So in comes Kennedy Orr. the block. Saved by ClickUp. Murray again out of system and the hustle never stops for the Cornhuskers. You want back row play? They've got it. And this dig made possible by Kennedy Orr. Sticks her right hand under that ball, lifts it, and then Harper Murray with a big aggressive swing in transition. Rachel Fairbanks looks a little shaken up in the front row for Pittsburgh. 
She's trying to test that ankle. Pittsburgh. Perfect pass. Fairbanks sets the bick right up the middle to Olivia Babcock, who's able to fight her way through that block. Textbook run from Pittsburgh. And I like that tempo better than that high ball. I think that allows Nebraska's block to get out and on those hitters. Gomez gets the block touch. Murray, a cannon set point, Nebraska. Her fifth kill in this set. Harper Murray is having a great match, but look at this one on one situation Bergen Riley is able to put her in. She holds the middle blocker with her. Harper Murray's got that entire seam to work with. Raising the tape and making it over. Fairbanks backside to Babcock. Second set point, Cornhuskers. Good isolation to Babcock on the right side by Rachel Fairbanks. She is definitely limping. All is not right right now with Rachel Fairbanks a pit. So you're shaking out that left leg. Side. Babcock dug by Bergen Riley. Tori Stafford coming to get it. Merritt Beeson off hands. What a rally. Stafford, third set point, Nebraska. In Pitt, that last rally had some great block touches that kept them in the rally. And then Tori Stafford, crossbody, working through the Nebraska block and scene. I just think uh, good preparation and uh, you know our, our blockers are being pretty disciplined. We get we got a little squirrely there a few times, but uh, they're being really disciplined and staying with the game plan. John, I know you love your freshman class. What's impressed you about Harper Murray's play so far? Uh, those guys are competing. It's, it's not the prettiest volleyball, but they're competing. We're finding ways to win those long rallies and. Uh, you know, I, I hope we get continue to kind of get better as this match goes on. Thanks, Coach Cook. We appreciate right. it. Thanks. John Cook, the National Coach of the Year for the third time in his career. His Nebraska Cornhuskers up two sets to none in the semifinals. So close to Sunday, they can feel it. What's the response from Pitt? 
We'll find out when you come back to Tampa. Also worth noting, Rachel Fairbanks, setter for Pittsburgh. She's still trying to work out that left leg. We noticed her favoring it towards the end of set two. On the other side of the net, what's been the best thing that you've seen out of Nebraska so far? Their block. Yes. I mean, it's been a block party, and they're very disciplined. Their scout plan, Jalen Ray's the assistant coach for Nebraska, has really managed this defense perfectly. Jalen Ray has in a sixth season. Does Nebraska keep its foot on the gas? Can Pitt respond? Here we go. Fairbanks to Valeria Vasquez Gomez, and hello, Nebraska block. It didn't go anywhere. That's 12. Unbelievable. And Becca Alec owning that net side to side, laterally closing that block for Nebraska. Becca Alec, eight blocks today. The service error gives Pitt its first point. by the way, coming off a career-high 12 blocks against Arkansas in the regional final. And Arkansas ran such a fast-tempo offense. John Cook said that helped prepare them for Pittsburgh, who also runs a very fast offense. One-handed set by Bergen Riley, and Becca Alec will terminate. How about the athleticism of Becca Alec? Bergen Riley pushes this ball one hand, but Becca Alec goes and gets it with her left hand, throws it down. John Cook has talked about how this team has challenged him to be patient, to enjoy the ride with him. It's something that Merrick Beeson has had to remind him of. But Lexi Rodriguez told us this team has learned to trust its training, and that's paying off in big moments like this. In leading into leaning into one another. We heard that every time we talked to a Nebraska player yesterday, leaning into the training, trusting the process. Wow, something is going on now with Becca Alec and Bergen Riley. Dangerous. Nice job by Nebraska. Lexi Rodriguez puts this right on Bergen Riley's head. She's got all of her options, and she goes to a quick gap 31 set to Becca Alec, who's absolutely loving it. I think you want to keep the serve away from Lexi Rodriguez. She keeps them in system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. The two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, an All-American, a captain. That's the libero for Nebraska. Nice try by Stafford to try to save that ball. Emmy Clicker just sends it a little bit too long and tight there on the second contact. Nebraska has dominated this match. Pitt has only led for four points tonight. Tori Stafford. There you go. And I love the eye contact from Tori Stafford to her setter, Rachel Fairbanks, after that. She says, come on, let's go. That's the set. Tori Stafford is not playing like a freshman. Not at all. She looks unfazed by this stage. Tori Stafford and her fellow freshman, Olivia Babcock, they played club together, now playing in the national semifinals together for the first time as freshmen. Eric Beeson turns it on the angle. for Stafford. Andy Jackson soaring! Andy Jackson, 15 and white, cross-body kill, attacking that right-back defender, Olivia Babcock, for Pitt. 
We're seeing Nebraska's go to the middle a lot more in this set early on. Becca Alec and Annie Jackson. Because they're passing the ball in serve receive, putting it right in Berg and Riley's hands, and that's a higher percentage play. Fairbanks behind her to Wokolo. Roll shot by Murray. Oh, what a play, what a save. Bergen Riley with the tip. Vasquez Gomez to the floor. What a play from Pittsburgh. Everybody was in, getting ups, keeping that play alive. Bergen Riley likes that deep tip. Tori Stafford runs it down and then the throw down down the line by Valeria Vasquez Gomez, number two in yellow. Dylan Griffin rotates in, Emma Monks now in the middle for Pitt. A must win set for the Pitt Panthers as Nebraska won the first two. A spot in the championship match on the line. Harper Murray goes wide. Unforced hitting there for Nebraska, but that ball's going to Lexi Rodriguez, and she's taking care of that pass. That's a good first contact for Nebraska. We're tied at six. That's the Harper Murray we've seen all night. Puts her in double figures with 10 kills. We talk about the importance of first contact. Laney Choboy, the freshman, puts it right in Bergen Riley's hands. And that's a fast tempo ball to the left pin to Harper Murray. Good isolation. Ten kills for Harper Murray. Five of those came in set two. She only had one error in set two as well. See the kill leaders for the Cornhuskers. The dump by Fairbanks, saved by Choboy. It keeps going. Becca Alex sends it right back. She's relentless at the net. How about this ball? Rachel Fairbanks aggressive at the net, but Choboy all over it. And then Becca Alex saying, get out of my kitchen. Let her cook over there. Going for the angle, there was a touch point for Pitt. Tim Fisher had grabbed the green <laughs> challenge card and puts it back. I just want to point out, you've got three attackers on this court that all have 10 kills. They're three true freshmen. Harper Murray from wow. Nebraska, Tori Stafford and Olivia Babcock, 10 apiece for Pittsburgh. The future is bright in the world of volleyball. Service error for Fairbanks. Puts Nebraska up by two. Pitt trying to get something going. So Nebraska rotates so that Bergen Riley is serving. This is one of their strongest rotations. And Vasquez Gomez is going to drop in the tip. Really nice job by Pittsburgh. Heads up play from Vasquez Gomez to drop in that tip over top of that block, recognizing that the defense was on their heels. You got to be able to side out efficiently here in set three and get out of that serving rotation with Bergen Riley behind the service line. Not sure if there's blood on Merrick Beeson's knee. They're going to put a little wrap on it. Visit by the training staff gives teams time to huddle up here. What have you seen different from Pitt in this set? 
better offense. I mean, they're hitting 273 in the set. We have not seen those kind of offensive numbers from Pitt all night long. And I think it started at the end of set two. Yeah. Olivia Babcock had five kills in set two. She started to come on strong. Tori Stafford has been strong all evening long. The offense has been great here in set three. It's got to continue. Well, bowl season begins Saturday, seven games on ESPN, ABC, and ESPN Plus. ABC triple header starting at noon Eastern. Howard and Florida A&M, then Miami of Ohio takes on App State, finishing up with UCLA and Boise State in LA at SoFi Stadium. So they're looking on the court now. Merritt Beeson's right knee has been wrapped up and they'll get a swab to come out and clean up the court. A little alcohol. Not the good kind. No. <laughs> Depends. Make sure there's not a wet spot on the floor now so they brought another towel out yeah let's get this going come on yeah. uh vasquez gomez has had to think about this serve for a long time i think the court is clean She gave her a little bit line. And Merritt Beeson took advantage of it. Beeson's been really efficient when she's got to hit on that outside pin before she can rotate over to the right side. It's where she started her career at Florida on the outside before switching over to become an opposite. The first time in her life playing opposite was when she went to Florida her first two seasons. They moved her over there. It's worked out pretty well. Had a miss hit by Allie Batenhorst. When Merritt Beeson went in the portal, she had played USA Volleyball with Lexi Rodriguez and Becca Alex. So she talked to both of them about what is John Cook like? What is the coaching staff like in the program at Nebraska? And they had nothing but good things to say. She said, shoot me straight. What yeah. am I walking into? Be honest with me. And she said, it's been everything and more that she dreamed of. Gets another swing, dug up by Vasquez Gomez. Here comes Babcock. Batenhorst on the angle. Really nice job from Batenhorst. She had a swing to forget a point ago, certainly. And then in an out of system situation, again, she betters that ball, goes cross court angle to zone four. Really nice placement and response from Batenhorst. And when she gets her feet to that ball, she's a very effective long attacker for Nebraska at six foot five. Tori Stafford coming in. Andy Jackson in the middle. Flicka saves it. Beeson on the right side. Amy Clicka there again. She got a piece of the block. Yes, she did. Great set from Fairbanks, but what a dig from Harper Murray, just throwing her hands up to keep this ball alive. And Batenhor is able to tool that block at the last second. They serve at Stafford. Back cut. Inside the court, rejected. Monster stop. Batenhorst. Andy Jackson and Allie. 
That Batenhorst right there. Look at Batenhorst. She sets up that block, turns it in, closes that seam. Nowhere to go. Ladies, that is 14 blocks for Nebraska. 17's the record, right? Yeah, in their last match against Arkansas, which went four sets. Beast it off hands. So that tells me, right, 17 blocks, highest of the season against Arkansas a weekend ago. They get better every time they step on the floor. And they are certainly peaking at the right time. It's evident from their play so far tonight. I feel like they're dialed in. A five to one run will force Pitt to call a timeout. Nebraska one set went away from our championship match. Obviously this is a very fast paced offense that Pittsburgh runs, but they've just been so steady from the start of this match until now. 31 blocks in their last seven sets, and then the ace out of the timeout. We've talked a lot about defense, but what sets up your defense? It's a tough serve, attacking from the service line. Lexi Rodriguez, enough pace on that ball to get away from the pit passer. 5-0 run for Nebraska. She awoke a breaks through the block. And I love this run from Rachel Fairbanks. She's on the 10 foot line, so you don't think she's going to go to the middle. And yet she pushes this ball so fast to Wokolo. Wokolo is able to sneak it through. Nice serve by Babcock. Wokolo on the slide. Andy Jackson in the middle. Four kills, no errors, four blocks for Andy Jackson. Transition offense for Nebraska. Not only are they digging a lot of balls, but they're attacking that high percentage ball to the middle blockers are paying off. And Pitt is going to be out of rotation. timeout you have to line up in certain spots on the floor for each rotation and if you're not in those correct spots it's out of rotation at a point for the other team and that's a mental error right that's something Pitt cannot afford to give up to this Nebraska team who's putting enough pressure on this Pitt team you can see Dan Fisher telling his team we have to wake up your back is against the wall in this moment you don't want to leave Tampa not playing your best not laying it all on the line Ladies, even more impressive is watching this Nebraska team under pressure and remembering the youth and how the season started. The new faces into the Cornhusker family. You started the year with six new ears of corn, if you will. And these would all play a critical part in this season. And of course, it's not going to be an easy road. They start out with tough non-conference matches on the road at Stanford where they get a sweep. They go, they face Kentucky. Then they go through the Big Ten schedule. They have been tested time and time again. They've lost one match and they never look unfaced. They I never love, look faced. I love that they lost the one match to Wisconsin. I, I truly think that it took the pressure off. They had already wrapped up the Big Ten championship at that point. And players were telling you, yes, you want to win every single game when you step on the floor. But it was nice to kind of have the pressure off before they went into the NCAA tournament and they haven't looked back since. And John Cook talks about his team and how they respond to getting pushed. He said, look, they're unbothered. And I like that about this team. Only the only champion with no seniors on the roster was Pacific in 1986. Nebraska is trying to be the second right now, just trying to get to Sunday. They can do that with a win in this set. Aces for Nebraska. Pitt does not have any timeouts left in this set. Back to back! You're 
seeing Mayor Beeson play a little game of yo-yo. Deep serve followed by a short drop serve right over the net and drops it right in front of Tori Stafford. Great serve. Four aces for Merritt Beeson alone. Wokolo in the middle. That's what Pitt needed. For Pitt, Chia Wokolo is their emotional leader. They need to get her involved, whether it's offense or defense. And, and they're just trying to get something going. You saw Coach Fisher make a substitution, put Valeria Vasquez Gomez back in the game. Juliana Dalton, the transfer from Washington State, has subbed in for the first time to serve for Pitt. And it's in, coming in hot off the bench with an ace. And that's why he went to her off the bench. She is so tall where she's able to attack and hit this ball. It's such a high angle that it allows that ball to drop in right on the line. Excellent serve. Coming off the bench cold, by the way. That's her third ace of the season. They run Andy Jackson off a of one foot and Nebraska has hit 20 points. Corey Stafford back in the match. Big set to Babcock and it pays off. Olivia Babcock, what a special talent. Mm -hmm. 11 kills, seven blocks, four digs. She has been so fun to watch all season. you're seeing from true freshmen is remarkable on both sides of the court, quite frankly. Harper Murray and this Nebraska team hitting 500 in set three right now. Pitt has a front row setter and Rachel Fairbanks look for Babcock out of the back row for Pitt. There she is. Nebraska knew it was coming as well. I'm not the only one. I was going to say, you were looking for it, they were looking for it. Fifteen blocks for the Huskers. Vasquez Gomez dug by Choboy. Block that ball in Nebraska. It's got all the momentum right now with Kennedy Orr on the service line. Rachel Fairbanks was running from cross court, trying to get back in time to go up for the block. Just a little bit late. Harper Murray feasts. Nebraska needs two more points to make it to Sunday in the championship. Fairbanks to Vasquez Gomez off the block. Bergen Riley back to Harper Murray. Long. Pitt's third straight appearance in the semifinals. They have never been to the championship match, and they have a hole to dig out of to get there tonight. Challenge. 
And he was quick to it, too. I agree, but I'm not sure Babcock agrees with it, and I think it was on Babcock. No, nope, it was on Monks in the middle. Watch that right inside hand for Monks, ring finger, pinky finger there. But this is an, an extra chance for Coach Fisher mm -hmm. and Pitt to talk to his team. Yeah, he did not have a timeout, so use the challenge here. The call will be confirmed, and it is match point Nebraska. They can feel Sunday. coming up for Nebraska. I think plenty of time, obviously, for Nebraska to regroup, but John Cook doesn't want to let Pitt back in this match. He knows how dangerous they are. A good opportunity to settle your young team down. Can we say they're young anymore? I feel like they're experienced now. We've made it through a whole season. They are experienced, and they gain experience every time they step on the court. I thought it was interesting, John Cook said, I don't have to motivate them in practice. This is a self-motivated team. They want to train. They want to get better. And we have improved with every single month of this season. And it shows, quite frankly. And I think they hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. If one player's hitting the floor, everybody's with them, supporting them. And that's contagious on the defensive end. No doubt. Nebraska started the year 27 and 0. This is after losing four starters, adding six new players. No seniors. They played the 17th toughest schedule in the nation and only lost one match. A point away from their 33rd win of the season and a spot in the national championship. Harper Murray. Stafford. Off the block. Riley with to be sent on the tip. And a fourth match point for Nebraska. And I like the idea from Harper Murray to tip this ball over the block. The only problem is Olivia Babcock's got some serious hang time. Look at her on the way down, but still able to catch that ball for a block. The call was a net violation on Pitt. And it's her hair, that does not count. Your hair can be in the net. 
your clothing and your body cannot. So Emma Monks does not touch the net with her body parts. When she turns, it's that braid that catches the net, and you see that movement there. Solid challenge from Dan Fisher. It was. That is allowed. in the match. That's pretty impressive. Olivia Babcock, Tori Stafford, they're going to be better because of the experience that they just gained playing in a national semifinal stage. What Pitt has done over the last few years, incredible three straight semifinal appearances, but the, once again, they will not move forward. Nebraska sends the Panthers home. A sweep, and now the Cornhuskers looking ahead to their 11th appearance in the championship match the first since 2021 they will face either wisconsin or texas that will start in about 35 minutes here on espn don't go anywhere eric freed and missy whittemore have you covered in the studio we will hear from nebraska who is moving on to the championship. The Cornhuskers looking dominant. Their 33rd win of the season. They are on to the ship on Sunday with a sweep of Pitt. 